Hare Krishna, Gauranga. On with the next 30 key verse of the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, still on the Chatur Sloki, Bhagavad Gita verses. This is now the third one. Uh, and we have Bhagavad Gita 1010. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're reading from the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Uh, Opulence of the Absolute is the name of the chapter. This is Shloka 10. Tesham Satata Yuktanam Vajatam Priti Purvakam Dadhami Buddhiyogam Tam Yena Mam Upayantate. To those who are constantly devoted to serve me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Nama Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauda Vana Pacharani Nirvasheshya Suni Vari Pasha Chari Sakayari Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Iti Ananda Shri Advaita Vedanta Shivasari Gauda Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukham Kurati Vachalam Pangum Langai Tigarin Yad Kripata Maham Vande Shri Gurum Dine Tharanam Paramanam Namadavam Shri Chaitanya Ishvaram Nama Shrestha Manama Pisachit Pita Atta Surupa Murupam Tashagri Gamurupya Maturin Goshta Bhaktim Radha Kundam Giri Vara Mahavati Kamadava Samprapya Yashya Padita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tamba Toshmi Nama Mishnu Padaya Krishna Chaitanya Padaya Shri Gurum Nanda Goswami Tamba So Purpa Bhagavan Vishnu Prabhupada Ki Jai In this verse the word Buddhi Yogam is very significant We may remember that in the second chapter the Lord instructing Arjuna said that he had spoken to him of many things and that he would instruct him in the way of Buddha Yoga. Now Buddha Yoga is explained. So the, the Bhagavad Gita is like a journey uh, going all the way to surrender. Essentially speaking, um, in chapter 2 of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Krishna has pretty much spoken all of the philosophy, realistically speaking. But he has to go into greater depth for Arjuna to understand. And uh, the same thing happens in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Shukadev Goswami also gives key shlokas and key verses all in the, pretty much in the first go, in the first canto of the Bhagavatam. It contains all the knowledge. But Parishit Maharaj asks suitable and intelligent questions for the people of Kali Yuga. And Arjuna also asks suitable and you know perfect questions for that same purpose. And Krishna elaborated further and further and was willing to again at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, go over all everything if need be to make sure that it was fully satisfying to Arjuna and to the future generations. And of course, the Lord did speak the Bhagavad Gita even after that to, to Sri Uddhava. And we have that uh, chapter of the, or well, chapters of the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam called the Uddhava Gita. And there is parts where the shlokas match almost word for word where Krishna is pretty much telling the Bhagavad Gita as it is again. And then he also, but he, he does it with a bit more, um, from a bit more of a Bhakti Yoga platform, because obviously Uddhava is not, you know, acting in the role of a confused soul. He already is a, a, a fully fledged pure devotee, and he's manifesting that past him with the Lord. Whereas Arjuna was a, a Kshatriya, a warrior, Krishna's friend, you know, so he was, he was, in a, he was, although he was a pure devotee, it was a different role. He was, he was enacting out at that particular point. Buddha Yoga itself is action in Krishna consciousness. That is the highest intelligence. Buddhi means intelligence and yoga means mystic activities on mystic elevation. When one tries to go back home, back to Godhead, and takes fully to Krishna consciousness in devotional service, his action is called Buddha Yoga. Yeah. In other words, Buddha Yoga is the process by which one gets out of the entanglement of this material world. So it takes actions to do that, it takes devotional service. This was kind of the, um, what do you say, this is kind of the, the culmination of spiritual perfection, is actions, you know. A lot of people imagine that... Um, mysticism or spirituality is, is always a, a static thing 
that you, you, you find a solitary place and you sit down and you fully absorb yourself. But full absorption can mean many things. We've been discussing over the last few purports and slokas um, that, you know, a 24-7 means wherever you are, whatever you're doing, we're thinking about Krishna. And whatever activity we're doing is linked because it's pleasing to Krishna and it's pleasing to the self, you know. Whatever a devotee does for Krishna in, many, in, a, in, a, in, in so many varied ways is Krishna consciousness, is acting in a spiritual way. And we hear, of course, the very, very last shloka of the whole entire Bhagavad Gita, Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Partha Danur Daraha Tatra Shri Vajayo Bhutir Dhruva Nitir Matir Mama Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics. So we just heard there um, in this purport uh, we said that yoga means mystic activities or mystic elevation. Right? So the, 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 the idea of yoga meaning to link oneself to the Supreme. You know, so the master of all the mystics is Krishna. You know? And then we're, we're, you know, obviously it, says it also gives some credit to Arjuna there as well. There will be also certain, there will be opulence, victory, extraordinary power and morality. You know? um, so Krishna is that master of all the mystics. The ultimate goal of progress is Krishna. People do not know this. Therefore, the association of devotees and a bona fide spiritual master are important. One should know that the goal is Krishna. And when the goal is assigned, then the path is slowly but progressively traversed and the ultimate goal is achieved. And this is kind of uh, setting the, um, the idea of association of devotees. This ISKCON movement, Prabhupada put it in place so that like-minded people can come together and, 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 uh, and help each other to stay strong. You know? We give the Prabhupada gave the analogy that if you take some sticks, you get one stick, you can even a big even a big stick, you can snap it pretty easily. You know? But if you get a bunch of them and you wrap them all up together, keep them in a you know, keep them like, as you're wrapping them up in like in the institution, they're all bunched together under this institution of this gone. You know, you can strain them, you can you can push them a little bit, but you can't break them. Because of that, un that unity of purpose, you know, and this is also what happens with the holy name. When when one devotee is chanting the holy name, there is, there is of course there's some effect. We're saying that the holy name is going up into the atmosphere. It's, it's going around. It's purifying, you know. But the the combined effect of all the devotees worldwide chanting the holy names, especially in a time like Kartik, that effect is purifying. It lingers. It stays in the atmosphere. You know, it affects everything worldwide. It changes the general um, mood, you know, the general aura of the whole planet, you know. And we need something like that. We need that kind of effect. We need that wave of consciousness, you know, to, 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 to uh, prime itself for battle against the onslaught of Maya and illusion on the other side, which, of course, is the whole purpose of this whole Kali Yuga that we're in right now. It's just a big... Um, you know, it's just a big sense gratification onslaught, you know. Um, and another thing that comes out of that is uh, knowing that the goal is Krishna and setting that target, you know. Um, there's a, there's a, a, a goal-setting theory uh, which actually was put in place by someone in the 1960s called Edwin Locke. And he said, goal-setting... Uh, Theory of motivation states that specific and challenging goals along with appropriate feedback contribute to higher and better task performance. So essentially it's saying that the goal setting is essentially linked to how you perform in tasks. You know? um, and of course another wee thing comes out of that. As he, he had five successful principles of goal setting as clarity, challenge, commitment, feedback and task complexity. And then there was process goals, performance and outcome goals. So there's different ways to set this up, you know, how you can, you know, how you can do that. And of course, obviously, this is kind of the things that would happen when you all get together, you know. That again, it's not just your goal, it's all the devotees' goal is Krishna. And we can see different advanced 
and, and new practitioners towards achieving that goal. So we can set that task. I want to. I want to be like them. I want to aspire to be like. How you know I can take qualities from people who are, who are achieving or have excelled, whose performance is is solid in achieving that goal. You know. So this is the other thing of the institution being there. You know. And another thing is um, uh, we hear about setting targets. You know, a lot of sports stars set targets. A lot of athletes. You know, a lot of. Um, you know, uh, you get like salespeople, you get, uh, you know, even, even these people that are just generally competitive and whatever they do, everything is, you know, target driven, you know. And it says goal driven means that one is motivated by setting specific target objectives. That is, one is driven or motivated by goals. If a person is like this, for example, he or she will work harder when there are deadlines to meet because you set your mind on that goal, you know. And this is, this is kind of the thing. Always remember Krishna, never forget him, right? At all times, Krishna's there, you know? You can imagine that the, 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 uh, the, the motivated nature of the, the hungry donkey chasing the carrot on the stick, and it's constantly focusing, it's burning a hole in that stick to try and get it. It hasn't realised, of course, there's, a, there's another part of that, but this, that's not really important to this analogy, but, um, you know, the donkey's just completely running focused on that carrot because it wants it, you know, and it's, it never takes its eyes off and it runs faster and faster and gets to the place where the, the, the manipulative uh, human that wants it to do something needs it to be, you know. But in our case, all we need to do is just be keeping that um, ekiha kurunandana, single-minded focus on Krishna. And we'll work harder and work faster, work more efficiently when we know that we have that goal in mind. When a person knows the goal of life, but is addicted to the fruits of activities, he is acting in karma yoga. When he knows that the goal is Krishna, but he takes ple pleasure in mental speculations to understand Krishna, he is acting in jnana yoga. So there was two different types there. Karma yoga is, you know, enjoying the fruits or trying to enjoy, as we've described before. We know that the, the enjoyment doesn't really work because the enjoyment comes with a kickback, you know. Um, so... Sometimes the, 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 the results of the knockback make the actual um, so-called enjoyed pleasure not worth it, you know. And that's usually, that's usually the case in the material world. As grim as it sounds, we all, can, we all I'm sure, can share different ways, uh, uh, different stories and different um, realizations from that. Um, how, the, how the material world can, uh, you know, invite you in and then chew you out, you know, spit you out the other side. They say that Maya, um, she goes, she comes in very delicately like a needle and then out like a plough, you know. And of course, Jnana Yoga is this process of intelligence. And again, we say why, why it's not as high as Krishna consciousness because men intelligence and false ego are the material senses. So then until you, you come higher into the the um, spiritual platform, then you're still being led by false ego, by the wandering mind, and by the speculative intelligence. Because the intelligence field usually means that. It just means constantly thinking, thinking, thinking. I wonder this, I wonder this, I wonder this. But Krishna consciousness is not I wonder. Krishna consciousness is about accepting authority, accepting what is clearly there, coming from an unbroken line of spiritual masters. And when he knows the goal and seeks Krishna completely in Krishna consciousness and devotional service, he is acting in Bhakti Yoga or Buddha Yoga, which is the complete yoga. This complete yoga is the highest professional stage of life. And as we say, it's complete because it contains all the other yoga processes. Originally, at first, when we come into devotional service, Krishna consciousness, we will in one sense speculate a little bit. We'll ask so many questions, so many questions, we'll doubt and we'll try different ways to, to use what we have already to try and get ourselves up to that platform somehow or another, you know. And we'll also have from fruit of activities, we'll like, you know, being good at different devotional activities to get some benefit out of it. And then gradually as we advance higher and higher, we'll realise that those fruit of activities in the devotional service will have to be let go as well because they're impediments and so on and so forth, you know. So we will have all those other elements of the yogas in Bhakti Yoga. 
you know. But then when one gets into pure bhakti yoga, that's the highest stage. A person may have a bona fide spiritual master and may be attached to a spiritual organization, but if he is still not intelligent enough to make progress, then Krishna from within gives him instructions so that he may ultimately come to him without difficulty. So you remember back to chapter 9, we heard this um, sloka, Ananyas chintayantamam yajana payupashati tesham nitya bayuktanam yogakshimam baham yaham. Um, this uh, preserving what you have and carrying what you lack. So here Krishna is saying a very similar thing, that if you are sincere in your devotion to me, I will give you that intelligence. I will give you what you need, you know. I will inspire you in the heart to, to, to do what you need to do to, to come to me. And he'll, he'll, he'll move and manipulate things. And we've seen this. We've seen, again, the devotees can share so many different stories about how Krishna has opened up the avenues to them. And maybe in some ways we haven't even realized that he's done it. The qualification is that a person always engage himself in Krishna consciousness and with love and devotion render all kinds of service. He should perform some sort of work for Krishna and that work should be with love. If a devotee is not intelligent enough to make progress in the path of self-realization but is sincere and devoted to the activities of devotional service, the Lord gives him a chance to make progress and ultimately attain to him. So we can never stress this point enough that Krishna is more keen for us to come back to him than we are. So he's always presenting the option. He's always um, forgiving us our slips. He's always, um, you know, uh, what do you say? He's always going to keep giving service to us. He's always going to keep giving us more association, you know. And that is, that is the, this particular special mercy of the Lord, his relationship between him and his devotees. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Nitai Gora Premanandi, Hari Hari Bol.